would like to thank my noble friend, the Minister, for Amendments 36 and 157, and also to speak in support of Amendment 59 in the name of Baroness Hollands. Before I do so, I hope your Lordship's House will allow me to take this opportunity to thank the healthcare professionals at Dyes and St Thomas's who recently looked after me so well following major surgery. Some noble lords may have noticed my absence. I've had half my leg rebuilt and I'm now the proud if involuntary owner of a Meccano set inserted by my excellent surgeons Marcus Banks and his registrar Christian Smith. So I apologise in advance if noble, any noble law seeks to intervene. I dare not sit down to take their intervention as I'm not sure I would be able to get back up again. Um, my lords, although the pain was excruciating and the morphine, which I'm wringing myself off, very welcome, it saddens me to say that the pain was compounded by the way in which I received no support from your Lordship's house. I might as well have been dead. It reminded me that this wonderful institution remains a place whose rules and modus operandi were designed by and for rich, non-disabled men. My Lords, I will say no more on the matter now, but it is clear to me that this needs to change if we are to become a stronger more diverse, more representative house. If we do not want to be consigned to the past, we must stop living in the past. The appalling way we treat members whose disability enforces temporary absence from your Lordship's house is indefensible and cannot continue. Returning to the substance of the amendments under discussion, I am hugely grateful that the government has listened to concerns I raised at second reading and others raised in my absence at committee stage. And all credit to uh, noble lords uh, for the strength and the passion with which they did so, and to the, my noble friend the minister for so obviously listening and taking their concerns on board. Taken together, Amendments 36 and 157 should make a real difference to the lives of all babies, children and young people in this country, but particularly those with speech, language and communication needs. And my Lords, I should declare at this point my interest as a Vice President of the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. I know my noble friend the Minister and his colleagues across government, not just in the Department of Health and Social Care, but also in the Department for Education and the Ministry of Justice, share my ambition and the ambition of other noble lords of wanting children and young people with communication needs and their families to have the best possible level of support so they can realise their potential. To help deliver that ambition, I'll ask my noble friend, Minister, to reflect on four things. Firstly, I would be so grateful if you would look kindly on Amendment 59, so every table by the noble Baroness, Baroness Hollins. This would help to close any potential accountability gap and considerably strengthen the provisions of Amendment 36. Second, Will the Minister pledge to ensure that all the guidance to the Bill specifically references children's speech, language and communication needs? The statutory guidance and accountability lead for SEND is a very positive development, but it's not sufficient. The vast majority of children with communication needs do not have an education, health and care plan. This includes children with developmental language disorder, over 7% of all children, those who stammer and those with speech sound disorders. The guidance must therefore ensure that the needs of these children are supported. And a model 
that the government has already timely established is a statutory guidance to the Domestic Abuse Act where speech, language and communication is listed as a specific intersectionality. Third, will the Minister agree to meet with the Chief Executive of the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists to discuss how the Bill's guidance can best capture these issues? And fourth, on Amendment 157, could the Minister reassure the House that the report will include commitments to act to improve information sharing? Finally, my Lords, can I just reiterate my huge thanks to my noble friend, the Minister, and to say how pleased I am to be able to do so in person in your Lordship's House. It's good to be back. Yeah.